Man 978 Chill Review. Hello everyone, right now I'm reviewing Transformers Masterpiece Movie Series 10th Anniversary, Bumblebee. Bumblebee is number three in this version of the Masterpiece line. The original two were a Bumblebee and Starscream mold that was released around 2009-2010 during the hunt for Decepticons. They weren't officially masterpiece, but they were very good for their time. I don't think those were released in the U.S., but now Hasbro and Hasbro and Takara Tomy have a joint release with this figure right here. So here is the packaging. It looks nice. It's very inviting. It makes you want to just grab this off the shelf. As you can see, it's very much in line with the regular masterpiece. This up is a little bit longer and a little bit more thin and well there's something in, i wasn't gonna say more lightweight but there is something in here if you need to see it here is the barcode just in case toys r us is hiding it in their store even though these this was street dated for number november 1st when i bought this but toys r us logo this stuff right here this that this stuff on the back right there and as you can see, the coloring is off on the actual toy. That is disappointing. It makes me feel like they're going to release a different version, which you know they probably are. But this looks very nice. It's supposed to represent Bumblebee from the original 2007 movie. He has transparent headlights, but they painted that little black dot right there, which is unfortunate. I wish with this being a masterpiece figure that they made that transparent too, but they didn't. They changed the side view mirrors. They were way more skinny on that concept car, but I don't that doesn't bother me. Straight out of the package, what did bother me is this yellow right here is way brighter than any of the yellow right there. And I believe that a lot of this is paint. It's like they went over the whole thing with paint. So I wish they were able to match that up. And straight out of packaging, first impressions were bad because Inside of that box, he's packaged with only part of the plastic clamshell. Typically with Masterpiece, you get a double clamshell so you can close it over top. It's only on the bottom with those little plastic ties that hurt when you pop them with your finger. So keep a fingernail clipper or a scissors handy. And the doors are open in the package. So he's very flimsy when the doors aren't shut. And if there are any problems, let me let you look at this. I like the, what they did with this diecast model back here. And I like the detail. If there's any problems I have, I got that paint. And the hood does not clip into place. This little divot right there is supposed to come up right there to stop that from moving. But unfortunately, it doesn't do that. And I watched MGO's review. He said he's tightened the screw right there and it fixed it. I tightened it and mine didn't. But I like that the windows are slightly tinted so you can't see everything in there. That sort of looks like a rear view mirror in there, but it's not. I don't even know which part of the car that is. I think it's the hinge that brings that up like that. But here you go. The rims are painted. You might not be able to tell. They have Camaro on here which the paint is not all that good. They didn't paint that, I'm just realizing. I think that's supposed to be a light and they, they didn't paint that, so. Yeah, I still like the car mode. And overall, wait till I get to robot mode. I'll, I'll sound a little bit more happy. <laughs> but it's weighty because there's a lot of die cast in it. It almost feels as heavy as Ironhide and Ratchet when they're in their van mode. In fact, I think it does feel as heavy. Because it's probably because of that die cast. Because it's definitely more weighty back here. He does roll well. And that is awesome. Here he is next to a Masterpiece car. Or a typical regular G1 Masterpiece car. As you can see, he is significantly bigger. Well, not ma massively bigger. But he is bigger. But this is a kind of a flat car anyway. Trust me, he was designed to be bigger. And here he is next to a deluxe car. In fact, well, a retro deluxe because this is 
2007 and as you can see like like wow they they almost match that that's that's nuts future deluxes are a little bit smaller transformation first thing you want to do is just come under here and take this little thing off put that to the side go ahead and wiggle up you want to get this freed up from that fender right there now that it's apart bring this forward this hint comes out and comes to the front separate this right here like i did back there bring that to the front now we could take this front fender or bumper and rotate it forward like that separate back here and let everything hang and dangle like this okay now we need to bring these arms down rotate this out of the way and bring the arms up and out of the way too bring this back and shove down on there bringing his head forward and locking the head into place right there before you forget these are supposed to be splayed out to the side his little collar pieces splay that out to the side now with these forward still we can come do this we can lift this windshield up and flatten that take this flatten that rotate this rotate that and now we can take all of this whole top of his car and shove it under there bring this back bring this down and attach the front to this gut part and this pegs into the die cast bar right there so there you go that bring the doors up like this and bring them back up like this bring them back take these and bring them down so there you go right there well now let's start getting on the legs unhook this right here bring it up and out of the way unhook that bring it out of the way now we can pull right here and bring his legs down peg his knee to the front pull right here bring the legs down peg the knee turn knees this way actually just just leave them how they are right now this is the toughest part of the transformation we need to pull these up to fill in his chest and to attach his chest to his lower body you need to get this round peg and this flat peg into the round hole and a flat hole right there which is easier said than done once you transform it enough time it shouldn't be that tough but at first one side will be good and you'll have a terrible trying trying to do the other side but since i've transformed this a few times i guess it's warmed up to me and now it goes in easier or i think i talked yeah there we go did i get it no it's not on there there we go right there and this popped off it's only on a ball joint right here is a little collar piece now that those are in place we can rotate this and bring it to the front rotate this bring it to the front back here what we want to do is open this a little bit actually don't open that grab this piece right here which will become his heel spur and pull his feet all the way down turn the toe forward move this out that way pull this down to this position and we want to get this to lock the wheel in the place actually i'm oh, sorry bring this down here and lock this into place bring this forward peg it into here and then shove this into the back of his leg bring this down rotate this forward bring the wheel down rotate the heel spur down and lock the wheel into place bring this forward and shove all that up into there now you're basically done but you need to get his hands out 
for that you want to open this panel push here rotate it's going to get stuck then you got to force it shut this back into the little peg holes same thing over here stuck force it shut this and now you are good to go you have transformed bumblebee and yes just like the packaging says it's a masterpiece movie series bumblebee this is the absolute best version of a transformable bumblebee we've ever received like it's the most faithful version of a movie bumblebee like when i look at this toy and when i pick it up and move it and play it play with it i just see the movie version other ones i just saw something that looks close to bumblebee but not nothing to this level like number one his arms are appropriately thick and beefy like they were in the movie his legs are pretty much shaped like they're supposed to be they have all this design right there the feet are fully designed like the movie that that's one of the main things i thought like yeah they'll never be able to get that right but they got it right only thing's different is this heel spur is very long for his support it's really supposed to stop like right there with this but the way they did the joint system down here is awesome the fact that you could put these panels in front of his legs every picture i saw was like this at first before he came out so i was so happy to see that he could actually do this but yeah one thing that i always hated about the movies when i first saw these designs for the characters i was like there's no way in the world that they're gonna be able to make a transformer toy be just like the movie and and i'm kind of still i kind of still am right because they weren't able to be 100, 100% faithful. Like in a movie, his back doesn't hang out this far behind his shoulders. This stuff is closer in there. But they did a good job. And they even gave us still details like this. They didn't paint that. But he had his engine right there. And one thing this couldn't do. But I remember them being able to do this on the original deluxe toy. These wheels were closer right here. Like they were in the movie. The wheels are on his back in the movie. I studied and studied and studied those character models in the movie. Because I was like, there's no way. Like this, these lights were like hanging off his butt. And these rear fin, I mean rear window things were actually reversed on a real, to real robot in the movie. But I like the way they they did what they did. And they made the compromises they needed to make die cast he has a way more die cast than any other masterpiece autobot car like his whole helmet right here this whole part all the way down to the hinge is die cast of course i showed him during the transformation he has die cast and the this part right here there's a long bar of die cast all of this is die cast this to tow this whole yellow part with the silver on it die cast and he has die cast right here so i don't know this might be the most die cast to one of these figures besides the earlier masterpiece figures like the original optimus brown who was a die cast monster but i like that they were able to keep these like collar pieces and whatnot oh yeah that was another thing i think these were the side view mirrors but of course they're not that here but anyway let's get into the articulation which is very good the head can go up like that it can look down this little panel piece might get a little wiggly that can move up and down and he can rotate the one thing i wish they added was i wish they put a ball joint under his neck so that like you can really tilt the head like Right now, it's like at an awkward angle. I mean, it's good enough, but it's always a little bit awkward looking sometimes when you turn them around, depending on how you want them to look, because the head is not straight. This would be straight. The shoulders move on a soft ratchet right here, all the way around, hindered only by the doors. I mean, the wheel right there. They go out 
on just friction plus this little joint right here makes his arm go out even further this little piece can come out like this but when you move the articulation right here to that way it pushes it back so he does have this articulation his elbow bends 90 degrees and he rotates right here at the elbow and what's this for it's probably for transformation but it gives him like more range of motion because since he's not double jointed this way he sort of is double jointed but not really the wrist rotates the thumb opens up on two joints the index finger opens up on two joints and these two fingers are pinned together on two joints it like i said the wrist rotates if you want you can break this right here and give him more motion this way and that way and just sit that like not all the way shut but it it still looks good for pictures so you're good to go right there waist rotates 360 legs they can go back on a strong ratchet kick all the way forward on a strong ratchet you might you'll have to move these out the way because they bump into this little mold piece right there he has thigh rotation right there and the knees bend 90 degrees basically it's pinned in right there but you could break that off and i don't know if it really changes anything he has a mid shin joint or i don't know if you want to call that ankle pivot because it's like it's sort of in the middle of his leg the foot can go forward a bit and back a bit it actually can kick forward like that and this pivots which is nice and the toe goes up and the toe goes down you could untransform this and let his foot go all the way back and all the way forward like as long as you can get him stable that won't hurt his mold or hurt his ability to stand in those poses but that is more than you can ask for as far as articulation his face is highly detailed and probably the most accurate ever like you can look all the way around they got, got all that going on the head is light piped but you have to have a light directly behind them to be able to see those so it would have been nice if he had like some sort of led in there because they are very very dark they should have made him have a lighter blue in there so you could look a little bit more life or you are alive lift this up and here is a problem i have this little thing is kept on by these two tabs right there i thought i broke them straight out of the box but it comes onto this what you got to do is just slide these back on here which is easier said than done it's frustrating let me do it off camera but as i was trying to show y'all there's a little hinge that comes down and then you can go take this and shove that down so now here he is with his battle mask and why does he need that battle mask he has this gun that's been stored back here the whole time take that off it's open like this in vehicle mode when it's attached to the bottom of them just shut it take this hand close the fingers the thumb put it in this orientation shove the hand in there take the gun there are two little holes right there put it like that and now these things can peg into the gun hand so now he's all armed up and i really love it only thing about it is it has that split in the middle which drives some people crazy but just don't pay attention to it and you'll be all right but he looks very nice with this gun and i like it i'm very cool with that if there's anything else the wings are adjustable i mean you could put them as you see fit lead the wheels right there have the doors like that they can go down maybe he's sad but then he's back happy again they're supposed to be collapsed in like this i guess but this door for me gives me trouble it just keeps coming back out so it drives me crazy because it's like kind of makes him unsymmetrical 
but he's very good. Like, I wish he was double jointed in the knees and the elbows, and I wish he had a ball joint in the base of his neck. But outside of that, I, I really love this figure, to be honest. Here's a comparison I was dying to see when I watched other people's reviews and they didn't do it. I was hoping that Jazz wasn't going to be so tall, but Jazz is huge compared to Bumblebee. And I believe he was shorter than Bumblebee in the movie. But looking at them, Jazz still looks good, but wow. Wow. He needs a makeover now. I hope they make a masterpiece version of Jazz. That would be awesome. Just make the original five Autobots. That would be very cool. Here he is with Jazz's partner, Lennox, while I got him. So there you go with that. I, I don't know where Sam is. One thing I love about this guy is that these feet are very good for wide-legged poses. It's awesome. But I can really suggest this toy. If you see him in Toys R Us, don't hesitate. If you really want it, get it. I mean, only thing I would say, or only reason why I would say hesitate, is if you want to wait till you get a coupon or whatnot. Definitely, he's going to be cheaper in the store than on BBTS or any other website. They're all selling him for like a hundred bucks, but he's eighty in the store. And if you got a coupon and rewards bucks, you can get him for like sixty dollars, like I did. <laughs> but anyway, he's really awesome. Get him. If you like this video, let me know by liking the video, clicking the like button. Let me know by subscribing. Let me know by sharing it. Until next time, T-Man 978, out of here. Thank you for watching.